All right, let's get one thing straight. We don't make crafts on this channel. We create beautiful home decor pieces. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been following along, you know that we purchased this home almost two years ago, and we have been trying to update it and decorate it to fit our style. Now, if you like to be inspired with beautiful home decor and DIY projects on a budget, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. We recently went to vacation on the beach and my family loves that salty air, that sand between our toes, and that smell of the beach. There is nothing better for us. While we were there, we went to little shops and visited lots of different places and I was inspired to create some DIYs when I came back to my home so that we can keep a little bit of that trip with us. Now I'll be sharing more about the places that we visited in a vlog in the next few days on our second channel, The Latinos Next Door. So make sure you subscribe if you like to see videos like that. I'll leave a link to that channel below. So once I came back, I got to working and this is what I came up with. All right, so for this first DIY, we're gonna be using some of these pre-cut wood pieces. You can get these at your local craft store. Now I had originally intended these for my look for less video where I recreated these Pottery Barn wood statues. However, they ended up being too narrow for that project, so I just kept them in hopes of creating something in the future, and I thought this would be a good time to do so. They weren't as long as I needed to, so I decided to go ahead and take two of them and glue them together with some wood glue. After I put the wood glue on, I used some wood clamps in order to make sure that the seal was nice and tight and the wood would not come apart. Once they were dry, I took my little miter saw kit and placed it inside and cut both ends at a 45 degree angle. Once it was cut, I sanded down all of the borders, making sure that there were no harsh edges. I did use a little bit of wood filler at the seam where both pieces of wood came together, and I also sanded that area. Then I placed a dowel in the center and cut it with my miter shears. And you probably know by now that I am making a little sailboat. Then I took my drill and some drill bits and decided which one would work best. Did y'all know that my husband got me my own drill and my own little set of drill bits so that I don't have to grab his? I'm so excited. I drilled the hole about halfway down and then once I was done, I added a little bit of wood glue and stuck the dowel inside. And then I went ahead and gave it a coat of early American wood stain. I have been using the stain a lot lately in all of my DIY projects, so I thought I'd go ahead and keep it all nice and consistent. And now for the little sale, I decided to use this ticking fabric that I had left over from a previous project. I had already cut it down and I thought this would be perfect to just use a little bit more of this fabric in this project. I cut two right triangles on either side since they already had seams. And then I hemmed the other two sides. Now in order to attach the sail onto the little boat, I screwed on a couple of these little hooks that I found in one of my picture hanging kits. I added one on each side of the boat and one on top of the dowel. Next, I took a thick embroidery needle along with some embroidery thread and I attached each of the little sails onto the hooks. I attached one at the very top, one on the farthest right hook, and then the inside bottom one I attached directly to the dowel. Once these were attached, this is how my little sailboat turned out. Now, 
Now my next DIY was actually the one that I was looking forward to the most, but it was actually the hardest to make. Now, this tray I got at Hobby Lobby for $7.99, but it was on 40% off, and I thought it was just the perfect size for these beautiful sea glass pieces of glass that I had purchased while I was on vacation. I thought it would be such a sweet idea to have like a mosaic tray for a bathroom that I could always have and remember our trip by. I first started by creating a mosaic template on the tray just to kind of give me an idea of where the pieces would go the best. And I did take a picture of it so that I would be able to refer back to it. Next, I took some chalk paint and began to paint the bottom of the tray because I really wanted a nice crisp white underneath the glass so that you can see the color better. Now, I have been thinking up of ways to get you all up and close to my DIYs so you guys can get some clear pictures of the process and everything that I'm doing. So I'll be working with some different camera angles in this video, so just let me know if these are helpful. After the paint was dry, I began to lay my tile back using the picture that I had taken as a guide to just kind of keep it as similar as possible. And here is what I mean. If you don't cover the entire bottom of the glass piece, you might end up with little areas that you can see like that. However, no matter how hard I try and how much glue I put on, I still got a couple of bubbles underneath. Once the glass was adhered, I got some non-sanded grout. You can get this at your local hardware store, and this is in the pure white color. Now, since I didn't need to use that much for my project, I just poured some out and mixed it in a little solo cup. I made sure to follow the instructions in regards to mixing it and then when I was ready, I decided to use a large popsicle stick to apply the grout. And since this was a very small project, in order to smooth out the grout, I decided to use my Mod Podge roller to get it in all of the crevices. After waiting the adequate amount of time, I came in with a wet rag and began removing all of the grout from the little sea glass pieces. I'm not going to lie, this part was a little tedious and I was really trying not to disturb the tiles as much as possible and not get any grout that I wasn't supposed to. However, it was a little tough and then I noticed that some of the color of the sea tiles were coming off onto my rag. So I was kind of freaking out at this point. And then if you can see, part of the wood, part of the tray started getting really dark for some reason. I think it was reacting with the wet rag or maybe even the grout, I'm not sure. So I was here thinking to myself, oh my goodness, this is not gonna turn out the way that I think it will. But I continued removing all of the grout and then I took some sandpaper and began smoothing out the grout in between the sea glass tiles. But at this point I wasn't too happy with the color of the grout because it really wasn't bright white and as you can see the wood part of the tray actually got worse. So I decided to take some chalk paint and begin to paint the grout. I also took the chalk paint up the sides of the tray as well as the top rim. Now it was never my plan to paint the entire thing white even though I still had to paint the inside of it due to the issue with the wood. But I went ahead and took some natural clear stain and I sealed the exterior of the wood tray in that so I can have that little contrast between white and natural wood. 
Now after everything was dry, I wanted to make sure to seal the white portion as well as the mosaic tile. So I took some of Debbie's Design Diaries clear wax and applied it to the interior of the tray. Now I did not show this, but on occasion when I was painting the grout a lighter color with the chalk paint, I would get some paint on the tiles, but I quickly removed the excess off of them. Once everything was dry and cured, this is how it turned out. Now, while I was on vacation, I did happen to stop by at a Dollar Tree while I was there to see if they had any more nautical or coastal themed items in their store. Honestly, the only thing I could find were these seashells, which was better than my local stores since I hadn't seen any of these. So I went ahead and picked up three little packages. Now, I do happen to believe that most decorations created with seashells aren't really that high-end looking and just come off as too themey for me, but I did have an idea of how I can use these in a more elegant way. So I began to drill holes in them, and holy cow, I honestly thought that I would end up chipping a lot of them because I would end up cracking them by using my drill, but seashells are crazy hardy and they're really hard to drill into now because of this i had to make sure that i had something harder underneath it so i wouldn't damage my workstation and my sweet husband ended up getting me a specific drill bit that cuts into masonry so it would be a little bit easier for me and that definitely it did help For what I needed, I ended up using almost two bags. But if you wish to recreate this, you can make it longer or shorter. Once the holes were completed, I took some jute string and an embroidery needle. And I began to feed the jute through the shells. Now you can string these back to back, but since these are concave, if you add them next to each other, they kind of end up inside one another or at least covering part of the next shell up. So in order to prevent this, I took some very small wooden beads and I fed them through the string between each of the shells so that they didn't lie inside one another. This is one of those projects where you can be listening to a podcast, watching TV, or chatting with your little kid. <laughs> My daughter was with me this entire time. Now, because seashells aren't always going to be the exact same size or shape, you just want to keep them to very similar seashells as you can so that it looks nice and cohesive. Now when you get to the last seashell, all you have to do is just create a knot on your very last bead. And for the very top part, I just added a little pearl and hooped the jute so that it had like a little loop at the end. And that was it. So for this next piece, we're going to be using a couple of pieces from Dollar Tree. Now this is just to give you some inspiration in case you don't find anything like this. You can definitely do this with any two pieces that you wish to put together. I had a candle votive and a candle. Now I wasn't too fond of the candle, so I decided to use this for this because I really liked the shape of it. And as you can see, the first thing I'm going to do is take a strong adhesive like E6000 or Gorilla Glue and adhere both of these pieces together. 
Now, once it is dry, we are ready to move on. I have had these vase filler pieces of mother of pearl chips for a very long time, but you can use this with crushed seashells or even the mosaic glass that I used earlier, but you need it to be in smaller pieces like this. So what you're gonna do is place the adhesive on the glass and a little bits at a time because you don't want it to get too dry. And then apply your pieces randomly all over the piece. Now the application does not have to be perfect, but you wanna make sure that they are stuck on there very well, so press firmly. And as far as the top part of the border area, as you can see, I am not taking it all the way to the top. This is gonna be up to you as far as how high you want it on your piece or how low. But I wanted it to look like one continuous piece, not two pieces put together, which is why I covered the top. And then I will run it down all the way to the bottom. Now, once you make sure that all the pieces are dry and completely adhere to the glass, you want to add some grout. And I use the same grout as I did with my little tray that I did earlier. Once I did the initial application of the grout, I came back with my finger and I began smoothing everything out and making sure that all of the crevices were covered and that none of the grout had any harsh creases in it or anything. I just wanted everything nice and smooth. I let the grout dry the adequate amount of time and then I came back in with my damp cloth again and began rubbing all over the mosaic little pieces and started removing the grout from them, exposing them through. This is another one of those projects that does take a little bit of time and attention. And I also made sure that the very top border of where the tiles were was nice and smooth. It didn't have any jagged edges on the top of it either. So I went to the top border and just kind of smoothed it out as well. If you plan on placing this somewhere where it will get wet, I do suggest to putting some kind of sealer on this. You can go and get grout sealer if you want. You can seal it with Mod Podge. You can um, use a spray sealer. However, since I'm not going to put it anywhere where it's directly going to get water on it, it should be fine. So this is pretty much all I did for this project. Now what's so nice about this is that you can also see the little mother of pearl pieces on the inside of the glass. Here I added a little bit of sand because I was including a little votive so that I can light it up. All right, so for the next two projects, I'm gonna be creating some art pieces that are gonna to be totally different from one another. I've had this frame for a while now. I haven't used it. It's been like this for years, but I haven't thrown it away. And I just, I haven't had a need for it and it's not really my style. So I decided to use it for this DIY. The first thing I did was flip it over and remove the cardboard that was inside. Now I'm not gonna be getting rid of the cardboard because I will be using it for this project. Now in order to give it more of a coastal feel, what I will be doing is adding some chalk paint to this frame. This color is Hazy by Folk Art and I'm not going to be covering it completely. I'm just going to be doing a once over, making sure I get into all of those little nooks and crevices. Now when the chalk paint dry, I came back in with a damp cloth and I began to rub it on all of the raised edges, bringing out the hint of silver underneath.
Now this was already giving it a beautiful coastal vibe, but I came in with some of Debbie's Design Diaries white wax just to give it a little bit more of an aged beach look. And I took a stenciling brush, dabbed a little bit of the wax off, and then I kind of rubbed it all over. I would do this in small sections, get my rag, remove the excess off the raised areas, and then continued to apply the white wax to the rest of the frame. While that cured, I took some of this grass cloth contact paper that I have used on so many other projects, but I love the grass cloth feel and how it looked kind of coastal and I decided to cover the cardboard piece with this contact paper. Once I adhered it, I put it back into the frame. And then finally, I was to add my art, which comprised of a three different starfish that I had bought at the Everything is a Dollar store while I was on vacation. And I just adhered them with some hot glue. So if starfish aren't really your style and you require something a little bit fancier for your coastal decor, this one's for you. Now this might not classify as 100% pure coastal, however I could see this in a very nice beach house in the Hamptons. I'm just saying. And it's going to be very inexpensive. We're going to start off with this mirror that I got from Dollar Tree. I've had this for a little while now, but they always have different styles depending on the season. And I'm going to tape the mirror off because I am going to be painting over this gold treatment. Now in order for the tape to go down seamlessly at the edges of the mirror, I would cut small pieces and then I would round it out with some scissors so that when I placed it down, it had a natural curve. Next, I'm taking this piece of artwork that I bought for only 99 cents in my most recent thrift haul. And I am gonna be taping off all of the border. I'm not really too fond of the pattern that's on the artwork, but I do like the wood stain edges all around. Now I want to add a border around the top of the frame. So what I'm doing here is measuring some square dowels and I'm cutting them down to the length of each side of the artwork and I'm cutting them with my miter shears to give me nice mitered 45 degree angled cuts. I always have these shears linked below because I do get questions on them. These things make crafting so much easier and they cut dowels like butter. Now once I cut all of my dowels, I place them on top of the art piece, but I don't adhere them just yet. And I place the mirror on the center of where I want it to go. I just wanted to make sure that I knew exactly how much space was between the center mirror and the border. And then I used some E6000 and applied it in several areas over the back so that I can adhere it onto the original piece of artwork. I did do a couple of dabs of hot glue just so that it would keep it in place while the rest of the glue dried. So then I took this frame and I applied a white primer all over it. And then I used some Rust-Oleum white semi-gloss spray paint that I already had on hand. So 
So while that dried, I focused my attention on the square dowels and I began to stain them. I first started with early American, but it was too light because I was trying to match the stained wood border around the original frame. So I ended up staining over this with some stain in the color mocha. Now while the stain did not end up being an exact match to the original, I did get it as close to it as possible. So I brought the original piece of artwork in once it was dry and I removed all of the tape. And then using some E6000, I adhered the dowels onto the border of the frame. And that was it for this DIY. Well, that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below which one of these DIYs was your favorite. As always, thank you so much for your love and for being here. This channel would not exist without all of you. So I wanted to take a quick moment and say thank you for all of the love and support and the sweet comments you guys always give me on my videos. I appreciate it more than you know. Don't forget that this Sunday I am bringing you a bonus video, a Christmas in July special edition video for you all. And as always, I'll see you next week with another home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios.